Today we're taking a drive in the V-Wagon. That's right, not the G-Wagon, but the V-Wagon. The Volvo Wagon V60 Recharge. This is kind of special because, you know, they don't make a lot of these wagons anymore. And the wagon has always been kind of a staple in Volvo's lineup. Like I remember in the 80s growing up, everybody had a Volvo wagon. Like they were timeless. And they're still here. It's just, you don't see them as often they're because- They're popular. People like crossovers. Yeah, People everyone's like buying SUVs. a crossover now. They're buying, you know, big SUVs. And this has been kind of put on the back burner. But I do think Volvo has done a fantastic job with this car because they're offering it in a hybrid format. Yes. You know? And like, just think of this as a squished SUV because you have so much space in the trunk. You have lots of legroom in the back. It feels very comfortable Yeah, they're up not front. compromising on space. Absolutely the not. They're, they're not right? compromising. You have the same amount as an SUV would have. Exactly. Plus, it's a sporty wagon. Like, it's a, it's a hot wagon, you know? Like, it feels like I'm driving a sports car. Even the tuning on the suspension is very sporty. You know, we have 455 horsepower in this car that's been divvied up between a two-liter turbo engine on the back Sorry, yeah, on the back? Is it on the back? Yeah, on, yeah. no, on the front. On the front. The back is being controlled by the electric motor. Right, that's right. Right? Which is 143-ish horsepower. Then when you combine each uh, thing together, you get a total of 455. But you know what? Coming from an electric car, and this being a hybrid, it, I honestly feel like I'm driving an electric car. It does feel like that, especially when you start the car and, and take off. Um, it feels so powerful, and you just, you know, you don't hear the the engine revving yeah. up. and you don't hear the engine revving up unless it has to because sometimes it needs to if you haven't used the engine in a while. And you can put it on B plus mode, which gives you that same regenerative braking that you would get in a normal electric car. So you don't have to use the brake to stop. You could do one pedal driving, which is also fantastic. And the thing that I noticed is that the hybrid or the, the, the battery holds about 60 kilometers of yeah, charge. You're supposed to get about closer to 70. Yeah. We just charged and we got about well, 60. 61, 62. It's a little chilly. It's like negative one here right now in Toronto. So 61 ish, but it's more than enough for someone like me who like just uses it to go to work and back. Right. You know, like yeah. what's the average that a person drives is like what? 50 kilometers a around day? Around 50 a day. Yeah. So this is perfect for like an everyday commute. And we've picked, we've been driving this car for a week. And you we haven't, haven't had to fill up on fuel. We haven't had to fill up on fuel once. We haven't used any fuel, actually, right? None. We haven't used the battery anything. has been used exactly. so far. So for someone who's, like, nervous about buying an electric car, which you shouldn't be, by the way, like, all this negative news about electric cars is blown over proportion, but if you're still nervous about it, this is a good, happy medium. Yes. You know, hybrid, still feels like electric when you want it to, but you also have that gas backing it up in case you want to, like, quickly go fill it up at a gas station and not worry about charging your car. Right, and this is really great for people that are going on long road trips, right? A lot of people have the fear of running out of charge, uh, not finding a charging station quick enough. So this, this eliminates yeah. all fear. Right, right, of course. But look, let's talk about the drive for a second. Like this is a sports wagon, okay? And it handles corners beautifully. You don't have any drift when you turn. It, it doesn't uh, overcompensate. The wheels are a bit, stiff just because the suspension is stiff to like take corners a bit better so it doesn't feel like the smoothest ride because this again this is a sports car but it's in collaboration with Polestar which is a subsidiary of Volvo and you have a lot of the Polestar branding in here yes in fact they they say this is engineered by Polestar in a yep, lot of ways this is Polestar engineered you have the gold belts which some either love or hate I like you have the gold brake calipers yeah you have the gold caps on the tires for the, where the air goes mm -hmm. and you have these beautiful 19 inch rims which look great right you know and the color of this car which is kind of like a grayish, it's a grayish blue it's really nice really nice it's a really nice color you know and look this car is not going to turn heads you know it's not going to turn heads when you're driving it but i think for a wagon volvo showed up and did the job and created something that is very respectable for sure now i'm not 100 percent happy with everything though the software experience in this car has been very weird. Like I'm a huge fan of Android Automotive and that's what this thing has. But the underlying layer where Volvo interacts with Android Automotive is a little glitchy. Like for example, Andrea is now sitting in the passenger front seat. If she gets out of that seat, the car still thinks someone is sitting in it. I've tried- Unless you put the seat belt unless in. Unless I put the seat belt in, yeah. it will think that someone's sitting in it. And I've tried restarting the car. The car even got a software update. 
and it still thinks someone is sitting there. The other thing I don't like is the HUD, the heads up display. If you're sitting too high in the seat, half of the heads up display gets chopped off. Like you can't see it. And the you reflection have... is another. Well, reflection is normal for No, heads. with heads up display, there's always a reflection, but this one is like over very the top. Overbearing? It's very over, yes. Yeah. It, it takes over when you're driving and all you can see is the dash in the window. Um, it's just not designed well. Right, because like if you have to sit very, very low if you want to see the heads up display right, perfectly. Exactly. Like if you're six foot, like I'm 5'11", I'm sitting pretty low right now and it gets cut off if I'm sitting like this, which is how I drive. If you're sitting like this, like you're 6'2", 6'3", you're not seeing the heads up display at all. Um, the other thing I don't like is the portrait mode. It's in portrait mode, the screen. Is well, it's a, it's a vertical nine, display. Yeah. yeah, so it's nine inches. I think it's a bit small, right? I would like a bigger display. Right. Um, I do like the 12 inch display in front of the driver. I've always liked that. They have it on the pole stars too. Yeah, just, I really it's, like it's that. A very, it's like a matte display. It doesn't pick it up is. a lot of it's reflections. It is, it's a matte display, it's classy. And it looks good. It's, um, yeah. yeah, so that's but that's great. This little screen and the way it's angled, I like the fact that it's angled, which is very driver focused. Yeah, the focused. vents on the side, I don't love that. It just feels like it takes away from the beauty of this car. You know, yes. like they need a nice, beautiful, big display but material finishes in here are very nice really really nice and, very, and the seats are very sporty looking very sporty apple leather you have nice the, and comfortable yeah. to sit in I, I feel like just i can chill in this car all day you know i love the way the grills look on the speakers which are bowers and wilkins tuned and there are know? 15 speakers in all in total um and there's another really cool speaker right there if you notice that that reminds me of a porsche you know how porsche has the little like clock thing in the middle yes. there or like whatever yeah. they call it, chronograph whatever it is that reminds me of Porsche, but it's cool. I think it's a nice little touch for this car. Um, but yeah, the, the, even the stitching on top of the dashboard over here on the front looks very, very nice. Uh, even the middle doesn't get in the way of my knee, which is a complaint with some other cars. The, the middle console is a little bit black glossy, which I'm not a fan of. And as you can see, it's already picking up dirt. And you said you saw some scratches already. Yes. I do like this. The crystal. It's the beautiful. Crystal the gear shift gear is Gear shift is nice. And if you push it past drive, it puts it in B+, plus, which will give you that regenerative braking. Cup holders are fine. I have no complaints about that. You have a little bit of glove storage over here with a couple of Type-C ports. But I'm surprised to see that there's no wireless charging, which is kind of weird. You know? And you don't have a lot of storage there. There's not a lot of storage no in the middle. There's no storage. Right? And Why do you focus on driving? I am focused. I am very focused, okay? And, and on top of that, there's no wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. You have to physically connect it to it. So now to charge this car is about five hours on a level two charger. That's kind of long is, when you consider how small time. the battery is. Yeah, it's a long time. But I mean, at night when you go to bed, if you have a charger, you can even just plug it into an out a regular outlet. And it'll take the whole night. So it'll take the whole night, but which is fine, right? Yeah. You're not using your car overnight. So not not the biggest deal. Right. Um, but And it has a CCS charging port, which I know a lot of other hybrids don't. I think that's one thing I like about this car. It's giving you like the full proper hybrid experience. Like it's such a good, happy medium, you know? And even if you run out of charge, because you have regenerative braking, like while you're driving on the highway and if you're just using gas, you're still charging the battery. So there's a constant push-pull of extra range that's happening while you're driving on a continuous basis. So the sunroof is a full panoramic sunroof, which is great because when you're sitting in the back, you have a lot of light. It goes all the way to the back, which is so nice. Um, no complaints about that at all. The back seats have a lot of leg room. Like I'm, again, 5'11". My head doesn't hit the top. There's yeah. plenty of you know, space, even sitting behind my seat where I'm the driver currently, just enough legroom to drive. Obviously you have a transmission tunnel because there is a transmission in this car, but you know, you have- it Makes it very uncomfortable for someone in the middle. Yeah. Right? Even have, a child wouldn't really want to sit back there. No. The transmission tunnel is really high. Like yeah. this is a long car. Like it's a long car. Like when I look at this, it looks like a hot dog. Like it's long, <laughs> you know, like it's- It's 188 inches long. That's long. Yeah. That's like, long. I think that's longer than a Tesla Model Y, isn't it? It is longer. So. $80,000 for this car, is it worth it? Is it worth the walk? Do we I, think? I think, I think, I feel like it's, I don't know, like it, it's a beautiful car, like don't get me wrong. And obviously you're paying more because it is a hybrid, but I feel like 80,000 is a slight, it's, it's hard for me to swallow, you know, because like even little things, there's no wireless charging. So it's missing like those key little features that most cars have. And for I, me, that wouldn't be the reason why I wouldn't buy this. No, car. it wouldn't for be me, the reason. Just, I, I just feel like, 
the screen doesn't feel premium to right. me. Right. Yeah. Um, the size of the screen is an issue for me. The heads-up display is not my. It's not There's ideal. There's a lot of little things that Just should be small... corrected for an eighty thousand dollar car. Right. But so overall, I... the car is beautiful. No, the old car is beautiful. I think this is a seventy thousand dollar car. If I was to buy it, I'd be like, I wouldn't want to spend more than seventy thousand dollars on this. Yeah, I agree. Okay. But price aside, I think Volvo did a fantastic job of creating a beautiful wagon. There's just a few things that I feel like could be fixed with software, minus the heads-up display, which is just in a bad angle in general. Yeah. Yeah. So is it worth a lot? I think if you're looking for a wagon, and like that's what you want, a wagon. Right, it's a very specific clientele, Yeah, it's right? a very a specific niche. A lot of people aren't looking for a wagon. Yeah. So if you are looking for a wagon. Maybe shortlist this. Then this is a great car. Right. For sure. Right. All right. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let us know in the comment section down below. If you want to see our next one, which we're working on soon, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.